arts are about your heart. They speak to this. And as humans, that's where our uniqueness lies. That's where our greatness lies. And so if we start taking away things, if we don't advocate for the things that speak to our heart, then the world starts to shift and change. I think it becomes harder, more hardened. We as people become more hardened. We become less creative. And we'll see a world that uh, isn't the best version of ourselves. We're not lifting up as many people as possible. We're not empowering as many people as possible. So to me, it starts with the arts. It starts with the arts. It's been my experience with many people that are arts advocates that we tend to be very polite, sometimes somewhat um, passive, and because it somehow, and I'm not sure why, someone's convinced us that you know, arts are a luxury, not a necessity, and you'll be lucky to get support. Now, in our political system, you know, America is the greatest country in the world because it's a participatory democracy, but that only works if you participate. And we as arts advocates have to be participate. I believe that we have too many arts advocates that are what I call interested observers, and what we really need are fanatics. We need people who are willing to be squeaky, because the squeaky wheel in our political system gets the grease. We've given away the conversation in many ways. How did we allow the NEA to, be, to somehow be associated with it as if it's a dirty three letters? It's amazing to me. If you just really think about the NEA, its history, what it's done, the legacy, and somehow, because we haven't been loud enough, I believe, we've given away, we've, we've let other people dominate the conversation and use something that is actually quite valuable and tarnish it in a way, in terms of political and public perception, that's just not appropriate.